Welcome aboard. My name is Dennis Hassel, and I am your captain. You can tell by my beard that I have been at sea a long, long time. Yes, I have been shipwrecked, but I survived in a lifeboat. And as we are in the middle of the ocean, far from land, your first challenge on board is to learn about the lifeboat. Because surviving in a lifeboat depends upon having tea. Tea for trust, tea for teamwork. All of you greatly various individuals have to become one body, a crew, because all of you are literally in the same boat. But this lifeboat is special. This lifeboat is like a treehouse, a cozy private getaway, a safe place, an imaginative place, a fun place. It's low tech. It's a place where you and your friends can get away from the ordinary and play games, tell stories, and enjoy each other, to, uh, to commune with a community. But every lifeboat is a safe place. So if you, at some point, when you're challenged, when it's your turn and you feel overwhelmed or you have a brain freeze or, or you feel uncomfortable sharing something, you can simply say, I pass. Now, those of you that know poker know that uh, Saying I pass is not quitting the game, it's part of playing the game. So now we take the oath of confidentiality. Everyone, everyone raise your right hand like so, and place your left hand over your wallet. I mean, over your heart. Repeat after me. What happens in the lifeboat, what happens in the lifeboat, stays in the lifeboat, stays in the lifeboat. Good. And now the first mate has you all on record. Your local host is your first mate, and like many in middle management, they have a lot of responsibility and a little authority. So please, listen to the first mate. Oh, walk the plank. That's all for now. Carry on. Uh, an update. Our ship has just been attacked by the Karakan and is rapidly sinking. Go. <whistles> Prepare to abandon ship. Make ready the lifeboats. Your first mate has your assignments. Keep calm and carry on. Welcome aboard. My name is Dennis Hassel, and I am your captain. You can tell by my beard that I have been at sea a long, long time. Yes, I have been shipwrecked, but I survived in a lifeboat. In three, two, one, go. This lifeboat is like a treehouse, a safe place, an imaginative place, a fun place. It's a place where you and your friends can get away from the ordinary and play games, tell stories, and enjoy each other. Your first mate has your assignments. Keep calm and carry on. You must quickly scrounge things from your home or office that can help your crew be found and rescued, and collect things to help you survive until you are rescued. I brought a big knife for like, if there's like wild animals or like a person I don't like. First of all, I have a knife for like getting fish, life jackets, an emergency blanket. By the time I got into the garage and back, most of my time was gone, so. <laughs> <laughs> I ran like a maniac to the garage. I'm laughing maniacally while I'm doing it. A little mirror to flash search helicopter or something, you can use the fear to signal it. I grabbed a crutch, uh, I don't really know why. We could also attach a knife to it and like javelin fish. Oh, and maybe we could wrap it with something and make a, a paddle. Some hooks and some wire oh. and stuff. And then duct tape, because duct tape's always good. Oh, and then I have like stuff to start a fire and a whistle. 
You have 60 seconds to find the shoe and find the story. So this is a uh, Puma Ferrari shoe. It was, um, I got it when I was working at, funny enough, my manager almost got sent to jail after uh, working at that for <laughs> fraud, actually. When the lockdown started, I knew that if I didn't do something, I was going to turn into um, a Pillsbury dough girl. So I got an app on my phone and I started running. And I liked it so much that I kept on going. And now I'm running 10K. And I'm actually thinking of maybe going for a marathon. Now, I'm the sort of kid that when I was in gym class, I would like be at the end of the line huffing and puffing. And I never you know, imagined that I could run anything further than 400 meters. <laughs> I didn't want to put on my boots. So I put on my waterproof socks and then I tied this uh, <laughs> grocery bag around uh, my socks. And I was walking to the bathroom and the one thing I didn't count on was the hill of ice that I needed to get down to go to the bathroom. So I skied on these all the way down the hill and they got all teared up. And then I also didn't count that I needed to climb back up the hill of ice and it took me like 20 minutes. My wife was convinced that this was a foolish purchase and a huge mistake. But what she didn't count on was that my daughter loves Frozen and it does this. <laughs> so she got over the weird thing between her toes because this would happen every time she walked and it had frozen on it. So it worked out. Dad did know what he was doing. You have to go out there and get the job, whatever it takes. I like to use teenagers for this because it requires you to lie your face off and teenagers prove to be exceptionally gifted in this. Your job today is to apply for the position of giraffe manager. I used to travel very often with my family up to the savannah. And at night when my parents would sleep, I would like sneak out and just like embrace the wild and hang out with my animal friends. And some of which were giraffes. So I know a lot about them. I spent a year living with a herd of giraffes and I really bonded with them. And I know a lot about giraffes from that amazing experience. Is that true? Yes. I did this uh, play um, when I was younger and I played a giraffe. And so I know like all the characteristics of a giraffe. So I think I can like connect with them on a different level. One weakness is um, I'm scared of giraffes. <laughs> I need to purchase a house in Collingwood. Purchasing a house in Collingwood. Have you seen how little houses there are to purchase in Collingwood right now? Everything's being off the market within a week or two. Deanne, the homes in Collingwood are gorgeous. There's these beautiful century homes perched up on the top of little hills overlooking the water and the fall. The leaves are so colorful. There's fresh apples. Five, four, three, two, one. Ahoy there, host! Welcome aboard, group leader. As you are leading video conferences with Lifeboat Online, your title there is First Mate. Now, if you are fluent in running video conferences, there are still a few things you should know. This short video just has a few practical pointers and hacks on how to optimize your use of Lifeboat Online. But I want to start with two huge pieces of news. Huge thing number one, you can also play these challenges on site in person. Online conferences will continue after the pandemic, but also lightboat challenges work very well with in-person on-site events as well. Small groups, often work sites, on-site classrooms, retreats, family gatherings, parties, 
any group that is together on site and in person. Huge insight number two. If you wish, you can also learn the role of captain. You could explain the activities without relying on recorded video from me. The best group dynamic comes with a live leader instead of a recorded leader. You could learn many of these games by heart. So you could take over as captain and run only the slides, the item lists and the timers from each video challenge. That's all you'd need. Or do it with no video at all. As long as you are subscribing to LifeBot Online, you are licensed to use the games with yourself as captain, whether you're online or on site, with or without the recorded video. Oh, and as I said first, you're licensed to use full videos on site in person. Now, of course, you can learn tons about hosting video conferencing from online instructional videos and live workshops and YouTube. So this talk is only about what you need for LifeBot. Now, you may be very experienced in hosting, but there are some parts of this orientation that are vital to know. So here's some practical tips. Please consider pausing me on each slide that's presented to screen grab it or print screen so you can paste those screenshots into a doc for reference later. First is about eliminating your exposure to any kind of liability. I wrote all 50 scripts and I have played versions of most of these games in person and or online with groups of all ages for decades and there's never been serious complaints and certainly no legal actions and you will see that on camera as the captain I urge safety regularly I state I am NOT giving professional or medical or any other legal advice still no matter how small the risk it's easy to avoid any serious exposure and just enjoy playing the games if you take these simple steps number one Play the intro video for all first-time players, which includes a liability waiver, including you, the host. Number two is a fail-safe, and you can pause here to screen grab this notice, so you can paste the notice into your video conference email invites. So, in your subscription, you agree to simple, common-sense oversight. Now, this is relevant mostly if you are running this in the workplace context or, uh, or for a community group or in a classroom or if you're working with minors. Now, you will determine these things. Who has access to your video conference? That's common sense. The appropriateness of each activity for your participants' age range? Well, that's natural. And set a child safety policy if it's necessary and if it's enforceable. Now for a few simple practical techniques. Using the recorded captain in voiceover while screens are in gallery view. The first mate, that's you the host, you simply turn on your microphone and turn up your speakers and without stopping my video you stop share my screen. Now you are all in gallery view but the captain can still be heard giving instructions through your mic, which you left on. The captain is in voiceover. Now everyone can see each other playing the challenges instead of seeing just the captain. And you, you can pop out of the video conference to the lifeboat recorded video when you need to, to pause or end the captain's instructions. Finally, this hack is useful for most of the lifeboat challenges. How to feature on screen a smaller group presenting and hide the rest of the players. For players that you want featured on screen, everyone else can pin them, or the host can spotlight them, which enables the rest of the gallery to be seen in the margins. But, if you are not all that experienced, if you are not a hosting Jedi, there is a quicker, simpler way to do that. Hide non-video participants. The simplest way to feature a few presenters is to on the bottom right of a Zoom video screen, there's a video button. In the arrow, you can select Settings and scroll down to select Hide Non-Video Participants. So everyone not presenting selects Stop Video, leaving the big screen divided between the two to eight players that you want featured. Now, if you're working with students or children and you're required to keep everyone on screen, then spotlighting is recommended. Where the featured players are enlarged, but the other players are still seen in thumbnail around the perimeter. 
Now there's a few efficiencies we learned in test marketing that you may already know. Have a co-host. They can back up record, they can mute players, they can send out materials via the chat function attached, and they can assign players to breakout rooms while you're juggling other things like uh, juggling octopi. Secondly, review the video at least twice so you understand it well in advance and you can alert the players in advance if they need to provide any materials like bring pen and paper, bring a potato. If the captain in voiceover mode is hard to hear in stop share mode, you can take over the captain's role. Just put on a headset and translate or repeat the captain's instructions into your microphone. Or you can just paraphrase his instructions and fake it till you make it. I am going to end this with a pop quiz. Number one, at the beginning, what was the first piece of huge news? Number two, what was the second piece of huge news? Survey says you can play these in person on site with any size group. You could put up the video on a TV, on a monitor or, or projection, or you could have everyone on their phones for the instructions. And then they're face to face to play head to head in person. The other opportunity is you can be the captain. Once you are familiar enough with the challenges and you're a lifeboat subscriber, it is a wonderful challenge for you to lead your group through some of your favorite games. Now, introverts who are leaders are of course welcome if they wish to stay behind the camera while the captain explains. That's it. I hope you find a handful of challenges that you learn by heart and you enjoy leading for decades to come. Because what the players contribute makes it different every time you play. Because these games are not just games, they're challenges for every individual, for you the leader, but also a challenge for your group. Group leader, you have the helm. No.